Today we're going to look at two nice problems that comes from the Finnish National Math Olympiad in 2001. So the first one is going to be pretty short, but the second one is a little bit more involved and requires some nice tricks, or at least will use some nice tricks. Okay, so for the first one, we want to suppose that we've got natural numbers A, B, and C satisfying the inequality that if we take the sum of their reciprocals, it's less than 1. And then our goal is to show that the sum of their reciprocals is in fact less than or equal to 41 over 42. So in other words, we're essentially maximizing the sum of the reciprocals given this constraint. Okay, so let's get to it. So let's maybe note that if 1 over a plus 1 over b is less than 1, then it's pretty clear that the maximum of the sum of the reciprocals in this case is achieved with a equals 2 and b equals 3. So notice that means that we'll have 1 over a plus 1 over b is less than or equal to 1 over 2 plus 1 over 3, which is in turn equal to 5 over 6. And how could we argue that a little bit more carefully? Well, notice we cannot have either of them equal to 1. Because if either of them is equal to 1, then, well, you'll get something bigger than or equal to 1. That's pretty clear. But that means both of them have to be bigger than or equal to 2. But now if a is equal to 2, then b is not allowed to be equal to 2 because then they would sum to 1. So that means that b has to be bigger than or equal to 3. And in fact, b equals 3 works in this case and gives us that setup. Okay, so now let's look at possible values of c given that we've already achieved this maximum. Well, you could just like very naively say that C could be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, so on and so forth. But what you'll notice is that all of these, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, will give you a sum which is too large. So we'll get the sum 1 over A plus 1 over b plus 1 over c is bigger than or equal to 1 in this case. Of course, that's built off of this maximum state where we have a equals 2 and b equals 3. So that means the first possible value for c that might work is 7. And then we have to check that that does achieve something which is less than 1, and it does. And we can see that as follows. So let's notice that 1 half plus one-third plus one-seventh is in fact equal to 41 over 42, which is less than one. But by all of that argument that we've said verbally, this is in fact our maximum configuration here. So we have one over A plus one over B plus one over C is less than or equal to this half plus third plus seventh which is in turn equal to 41 over 42. That's exactly what we wanted to show for this first one. Okay, let's move on to the second problem. So for our second problem, we'd like to determine all non-negative integers in satisfying this divisibility condition. So you have n squared plus two divides 2001 n plus two. So when I say divides, I mean it's a factor of 2001 n plus 2. Okay, so our idea here will be to use this divisibility condition to somehow get rid of the n's in one side of the equation. Okay, so let's see what I mean by that. So if we have n squared plus 2 dividing into 2001 n plus 2, then that tells you that there exists an integer which I'll call capital A such that 2001 n plus 2 equals n squared plus 2 times this capital A. 
That's just the definition of divisibility here. But now what I'd like to do from here is multiply both sides of this equation by something that will aid our simplification. And so what will we multiply by? Well, I've got this n squared over here on the right-hand side. So perhaps I'd like to get an n squared over here on the left-hand side. But maybe I'd like to do that without getting a free n, an n by itself, or an n that's not squared, I should say. Well, I could do that using a difference of squares factorization idea. So let's multiply by 2001n minus 2. So multiply both sides of this by that sort of object. So what is that going to leave us with? So we'll have 2001 squared times n squared minus 2 squared, which is obviously equal to 4. And then on the right-hand side, I'm just going to write this as n squared plus 2 times something that I'll call b, where I've just absorbed the factor of 2001n minus 2 into this number b. Okay, now where would I like to go from here? Well, what I'd like to do is somehow get rid of this n squared on the left-hand side. And how could I do that? Well, let's notice that we can build another factor of n squared plus 2. And I'm going to write it as n squared plus 2 times c over here on the right-hand side, just because I don't need to know exactly what the factor is in the end, I just need it to be a factor of n squared plus 2. But then on the left-hand side, I'll assign c equal to a value for my simplification. And that value will create this 2001 squared. So in fact, c will be equal to 2001 squared. So let's point that out here. So like I said, I don't need that on the right-hand side, but I will need it then on the left-hand side. So c equals 2001 squared. So what does that leave me with? So I have 2001 squared n squared plus 2 times 2001 squared. But now I'll combine these two equations to get rid of the n squared over here on the left-hand side. So in this case, I can take this first equation, multiply it by negative 1, and then add it to this second equation. So what is that going to leave me with in the end? So let's notice that the 2001 n squared terms will cancel, and then I'll be left with 2 times 2001 squared plus 4 on the left-hand side, and then on the right-hand side will be n squared plus 2 times c minus b. But then we can simplify this over here to, well, you know, some very large number. So what is that number? Well, it's 8008006. And then that has a prime factorization as well. And that prime factorization is 2 times 19 times 83 times 2539. And I point that out because that'll be useful for an upcoming step. And then this is going to be equal to n squared plus 2 times something else. But that something else doesn't matter at the moment, so I'll just put a blue box there. And then let's use this to say the following statement. So that means n squared plus 2 is a factor of this number right here, 8008006. In other words, it's a divisor of that. But using this prime factorization, we can somewhat easily make a list of all of the divisors just by taking products of subsets of these prime factors right here. And that's going to give us the following statement. We'll have n squared plus 2 comes from this fairly large set of divisors, which maybe I'll put on the board right now. Okay, so there we go. That's our big list of factors that n squared plus 2 must be a member of. So I'm not going to read those all off, 
But I will say that if n squared plus 2 has to be an element of this set, then n squared has to be an element of the set which is exactly the same, except we've reduced every number by 2. So let's start the next board with that fact, that n squared comes from that set. So based off what we just did, we know that if n squared plus 2 divides 2001n plus 2, then n squared comes from the following fairly exhaustive list. And I guess from here you could just try to take the square root of all of those and determine which ones of those are perfect squares and that'll be your answer. But I think that's a little bit too much work, so let's use some well-known facts about perfect squares. And I'll call these three different filters. So we're filtering out the non-squares. So the first is that perfect squares can only end in double zeros, one, four, five, six, nine. So this is discussing the last digit of perfect squares. And you can get this by looking at perfect squares mod 10. And I included the double zero in here. That's kind of a little bit different than these because that's the last two digits. But that's applicable here. Okay, so let's cross out everything that does not satisfy this. So notice the number negative one. Well, it kind of satisfies this, but negative one is not a perfect square of an integer. So that's not gonna be good for us. And then we cross out 17 because it ends in a seven, but we also know that 17 is not a perfect square. We cross out three because it ends in a three, but that's not one of these numbers. Okay, we can cross out seven because it doesn't end in one of these numbers. Let's see, the next two, well, this 3152 is not okay. It ends in a two, that's not there. This is okay because it ends in a nine. This ends in a zero, but not a double zero, so that's not good for us. The next one ends in a five, which is okay. This ends in a two, which is not okay. The next two end in a one and a four, so those are okay. Next up, we'll use the fact that perfect squares are only congruent to zero or one mod four. That's the remainder after dividing by four. But luckily, since 100 is, is divisible by four, we only have to look at the last two digits mod four. In other words, we look at the remainder of the last two digits after dividing by four. If it's a zero or a one, we're okay. If it's a two or a three, then we have to throw those out. So let's apply this filter. So let's look at 75. So 75 has a remainder of three when dividing by four because 72 is divisible by four. So that makes this one not possible. 76 is okay, so 5076 is okay. This one is not okay. The last two digits are 39. That's three more than a multiple of 436. So we get rid of this. Then 35, well, that's not okay either because that's three more than 32. That means this, let's see, 210,735 is not a possible perfect square. Okay, well, this one is okay and this one is okay. This is congruent to one mod four and this is congruent to zero mod four, so those are okay. Okay, so that's our second round of filtration. Now let's do our final round of filtration, and that is perfect squares are congruent to zero or one mod three. And we pick mod three because it's also easy to check the equivalence class mod three just by taking the sum of the digits. Recall that the remainder of a number after dividing by three is equal to the remainder of the sum of the digits after dividing by three. So that's a good time saver. So 36 and 81 are okay. We already know those are perfect squares, so we're good to go there. Now let's look at this next one, 5076. So six is divisible by three, so we don't need to worry about it. Five plus seven is 12. That's divisible by three, so that's okay as well. So notice four plus four is eight plus one is nine. That's divisible by three. So that means that this is zero mod three. Okay, so we haven't really helped ourselves out much yet, but we will help ourselves out here. Notice that eight plus eight is 16 plus four is 20, but 20 is 
2 mod 3, so this is not allowed to be a perfect square. So we only got to delete one of those in this case, but I think that's okay. So after this reduction, let's notice that we have n squared is only from the following available subset. So 0, 36, 81, and then 5, 0, 7, 6, and then finally 4, 0, 0, 4, 0, 0, 1. And now we've got a set that's small enough so that we can just think about taking square roots. So notice that n comes from the set 0, 6, 9. That's the square root of 0, 36, and 81. Then you can check that 5, 0, 7, 6 is not a perfect square. So that doesn't give us an available value of n. But 4, 0, 0, 4, 0, 0, 1 is a perfect square. And it's 2,001 squared, leaving us with the last possible value of n. And I guess just by visual inspection, we see that n equals 2001 is a possibility. And so that would really tell us that this is probably 2001 squared. Or it essentially says that it has to be 2001 squared. Now, that being said, that means the only thing that you'd really have to check is the perfect squareness of this. But I bet you could easily show that that's not a perfect square by bounding it between two perfect squares in the 70s. I say in the 70s because 70 squared will be 4,900, whereas 80 squared will be 6,400. So somewhere this will be between two perfect squares in the 70s. Maybe post in the comments which two perfect squares in the 70s this 5,076 is between. And also, is there another filter that I could have used, a maybe well-known filter, that would have filtered this 5076 out, meaning that we wouldn't have to check it? Post if you know that in the comments as well, and that's a good place to stop. Thanks for watching and sticking around until the end of the video. And since you're here, don't forget to gently press that like button. Subscribe, ring the bell, and select all notifications to never miss a video. If you want to get your name in the credits like you see here, access the live seminar series, review videos before release, and more, go to patreon.com slash michaelpenmath and become a Patreon member today. If you want full ad-free course content, Subscribe to my second channel, Math Major. I've got courses on linear algebra, complex analysis, and proof writing, among several others. And that's everything. Bye.